Here we see code bubbles, an IDE for Java that is designed to support working with multiple fragments of code at once. Here the user opens a bug they need to fix in a bubble and then opens a note bubble next to it to jot down some ideas on how to fix the bug. Using the in situ search box, the user opens a method in place and then performs a series of open declaration operations. Note that the resulting methods open side by side and each method is displayed in a bubble. The bubble is automatically pre-sized to contain the method and can be moved and interacted with independently. Here the user moves the group of methods by dragging within the group boundary. Groups can be named simply by typing in a title box. Group information is automatically persisted and can be used to reload the group in the future. A breadcrumb bar at the top of each bubble discloses the package and class. Clicking drops down a list of the class's contents. The user then opens a bubble containing the class's member variable. The user notices something about a function and then adds a flag bubble to remind them of its importance. Flags can be changed later as needed. The user moves a bubble by right-click dragging and then performs a Find All References operation, opening a bubble stack of the results. Results can be expanded in place, and then relevant items can be torn out. Hovering shows a tooltip preview. Bubbles do not overlap, but rather push each other out of the way, allowing the user to add bubbles to the group without having to manually reposition existing bubbles. When the user runs out of room, they can pan over to access a large virtual workspace. Here the user takes advantage of the Package Explorer to open several relevant items. As before, hovering over an item shows a preview. For reference, the user opens a Java doc in a bubble using the same in situ search box they use for opening methods from the project. Clicking a type link opens a second javadoc bubble on the class. The user can expand different sections of the javadoc, or open further link docs as needed. Group information can also be used to discover related methods. Here the user brings up a list of related bubbles, notices one of interest, and then clicks to open it. Long lines of code are wrapped to fit horizontally using syntax-aware reflow. Typing into a bubble causes it to expand, pushing adjacent bubbles out of the way. Users can also create new methods in a class in much the same way they are used to, by simply typing at the end of an existing method. As the user types, their text will butt off to form a separate bubble. The user can glance at other bubbles in their working set as needed in writing the new method. The user realizes they would like to see some of the bubbles they opened earlier to help in writing the new method. Pressing F9 zooms out, at which point the user can rearrange bubbles and then zoom back in to continue working. Zoom can also be used to navigate within the working set. When zoomed out, each bubble has a key overlay. Pressing that key will zoom in on the corresponding bubble, giving users a keyboard method for navigating the workspace. A panning bar at the top of the display contains a miniature map of the entire workspace. Here the user names the section of the workspace they are currently working on. Each section can be resized to occupy more or less space, and a color can also be assigned to that section. The user is interrupted and needs to work on another task, so they click on an unused portion of the panning bar to navigate to another point in the workspace. Here they can now open bubbles related to the new task. Because Find All References displays its results in a bubble, the user can perform multiple such searches side by side to compare the results. After looking at the results, the user notices that there is a function in common. When the user opens a new bubble, it is highlighted in yellow to draw a user's attention. After opening two functions of interest, the user wonders whether one calls the other. By holding down the Alt key and drawing a line between the two, the system performs a static call graph search and displays the shortest path, if any, between the two functions. A small number overlay indicates other branching paths. To give a coworker a better over-the-shoulder view of their workspace, the user zooms in. The user adds a note bubble and then types some reminders and other notes to help their coworker with their task. The user then names this section of the workspace, which contains information that will help their coworker. The user then executes the send as email command to attach this section of the workspace as an XML file to a new email message, 
which their coworker can later import into their own workspace. When the user is done, they can return to their original task by clicking on the panning bar. Their working set is just as they left it, helping the user resume their original task. Now done with that section of the workspace, the user can close it. Once closed, it is automatically saved to the task shelf. The user then opens several tasks they had been working on earlier in the week by right-clicking on the panning bar to open the task shelf. Tasks are grouped by date and clicking on one will open it in place. This allows users to revisit working sets of bubbles created in the past and also to manage the contents of their workspace. The user decides to make use of the breakpoint debugger provided in CodeBubbles. The user adds several breakpoints by clicking next to the appropriate line in the breakpoint bar of each bubble. The user runs the program in debug mode. Once a breakpoint is hit, the user is taken to an area of the workspace reserved for debug sessions. The bubble containing the breakpoint is opened, along with a bubble containing the call stack. The user clicks Step Into. The function is opened in a new bubble side by side. Clicking Step Into again results in a third bubble open side by side. The user then inspects the value of an object. The values are displayed in a data structure bubble. Clicking Step Out twice returns the user to the original function. All of the bubbles are left open. Stepping into another function, the user then inspects another data structure. The user then compares values in this data structure with the values from the other data structure. The user notices something of interest and adds a flag bubble to their working set. When the user presses stop, their debug session is preserved. The user plans to make a change to fix the bug and so names the debug session appropriately. After making a change, the user runs the debugger again. The previous session is visible side by side with the new session each in separate debug channels. Each channel has a small panning bar, allowing it to grow beyond the size of the screen, and can be panned independently. When the user clicks Resume, the second breakpoint is hit. A new bubble and accompanying call stack is opened side by side to the right in the channel. The user then inspects another data structure and compares it in context with the other data structures visible on screen, both from earlier in the current debug session and from the previous debug session before the change. After clicking Resume, the program outputs values to the console. The printouts are directed to multiple named console bubbles based on a user-configurable prefix for each printout. This allows the user to separate related printout statements, in this case front-end and back-end related printout statements. Just as with panning bar sections, debug sessions are automatically persisted and can be revisited later. Thus we have seen CodeBubbles, a prototype IDE user interface for Java designed around the concept of collections of lightweight editable fragments called bubbles, which when grouped together form concurrently visible working sets.